I'd like to welcome you all to the fourth and final webinar in UC Irvine Extension's third annual GATE webinar series. Tonight's topic is Collaborative Learning with Wikis, presented by Catherine Cabanis. This live session is being recorded. If you registered for this webinar through our free events website, you should receive an email with a link to the recording as well as a PDF copy of the PowerPoint presentation and any related documents within 24 hours. My name is Lisa Kotowalki and I am a program representative here at UC Irvine Extension. Tonight I am logged in on behalf of my director, Angela Jante. Here is a brief overview of what we are going to cover in this webinar session. First, I'll start off with a quick overview of WebEx features so that you'll know how to submit questions to our featured speaker throughout the presentation. Next, I will provide you with some information about several GATE resources offered through UCI Extension, including our fully online, gifted and talented education, specialized studies program. I will cover the requirements for the program, fees, and some upcoming courses for our spring quarter which begins March 28th. I will then hand it over to Catherine Kevinis, who is our presenter tonight. Catherine will be presenting on tonight's topic, Collaborative Learning with Wikis. At the end of Catherine's presentation, we will have a brief Q&A session. Finally, I will leave you with my contact information so that you can send me any additional questions that we didn't address. If you encounter any technical difficulties during the webinar tonight, please shoot a chat message over to UCI Eric and he will help you troubleshoot any issues. If you have a question for myself or Catherine regarding the content of this presentation, please submit it in the Q&A box and we will address it at the end if we have time. If you look at the top of the participant list on the right-hand side of the screen, you should see a row of icons. Press on the question mark icon and the Q&A panel will show up. Please feel free to submit questions throughout the presentation and we will address them at the end of the webinar. Here's a brief overview of the GATE Specialized Studies program we have here at UC Irvine Extension. Our certificate program is fully online and consists of nine quarter units. Students have the opportunity to pick from a variety of electives with different unit values to make up those nine units. Since the program is fully online, we are open to individuals here in California, as well as around the country and all over the world. Our program is taught by a team of experts and is designed for individuals new to the field, as well as current GATE educators seeking professional development opportunities. To be eligible for this certification, students must complete all nine units with a grade of C or better, as well as a completed application for candidacy. The courses in the program range from $350 to $500 per course, depending on the unit value. You may take individual courses without pursuing the entire certificate program. Here's a list of courses that make up our GATE certificate program. Regardless, regardless of which elective you choose to satisfy the nine unit requirement, our program will help you develop a new skill set and gain a deeper understanding of the needs and issues of this diverse group of students. When viewing the course schedule, you'll notice that not all classes are offered every quarter, so please plan accordingly. Pay close attention to the unit value of the, each course because this dictates the course fee and how long each course will last. For example, you can expect Learning Styles, a one-unit course, to cost $350 and last four weeks online, while Differentiated Instruction, a three-unit course, costs $500 and lasts 11 weeks online. The nice thing about our Specialized Studies program is that you can earn your certificate in as little as nine months 
and can choose only the courses of greatest interest to you. Here is a list of the courses we are offering in the upcoming spring quarter. Differentiated instruction at three units, learning styles at one unit, and effective teaching through multiple intelligences theory at two units. Each course is listed with its start and end date, as well as the online course fee. The course schedule and enrollment information are also posted on our website. Enrollment is currently open, and students may enroll either online, by mail, over the phone, by fax, or in person through our Student Services Office. We encourage students to enroll at least two weeks prior to the start of a course, but we also accept a registration during the first week or orientation week of a course. UC Irvine Extension also provides individual courses, specialized in services, and the entire GATE certificate program on-site or online to schools and districts at reduced prices. We currently work with several school districts who are putting cohorts of teachers through our GATE program and are receiving 10, 15, or 20% off course fees. With one district, we send our university-approved instructors to teach the classes on-site at their district office. With other districts, we provide customized online courses available only to teachers from that particular school district. In any case, we hope that there is an opportunity for UCI Extension to meet your GATE training needs. If you wish to learn more about our program and discount offers, please email me or call 949-824 9304. As you may already know, UC Irvine Extension hosts an online GATE community that is free and open to the public. Please follow the directions on this slide to become a member, and you will gain access to valuable resources, news, and events regarding GATE. Recordings of all of our past webinars are available through the community, so I do encourage you to join. This weekend, California Association for the Gifted, commonly referred to as CAG, is hosting its 49th annual conference in Palm Springs, California. UC Irvine Extension is proud to be a credit provider for this event. In order to receive one unit of credit, individuals must attend the CAG conference submit an official enrollment form with $100 payment, and write a two-page reflection paper summarizing what you learned at the conference and how you will apply what you learned to your teaching practice. The deadline for all submissions is March 25, 2011. Not only can this credit be used as proof of professional development for salary advancement, it can also be applied toward UC Irvine Extension's GATE Specialized Studies program. For those of you attending the conference, please look for the enrollment form at the registration table or email me in advance. I will also be attending the conference, so feel free to stop me and I'm, I'll probably have some enrollment forms on me and you can get it from me then. To wrap up my part of the presentation, hopefully you saw some courses that piqued your interest and we hope you will consider adding our fully online GATE program to your credentials. This slide has my contact information as well as my directors, so feel free to contact us with any questions. Tonight's presenter is Katherine Cabanis. She has been teaching at the middle school level for 16 years and has served as the History Social Science Department Chair for over 10 years. Catherine is a former mentor teacher and has presented at numerous professional development workshops on differentiation and technology. She will be speaking to you tonight on the topic collaborative learning with wikis. Now I'm going to go ahead and hand over the presenter ball to Catherine. And also just to let you all know, an email, you should have received an email if you registered before 2 o'clock this afternoon 
with a couple PDF handouts. One of them is called Wiki Basics, and the other one is called Response to Text Options. So if Catherine men mentions those specific PDF documents um, in her presentation tonight, you may want to have them by you um, just to follow along. Okay, Catherine, I went ahead and handed over the presenter ball to you, so go ahead with your presentation. Thank you, Lisa. Good evening. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. I am very excited to share with you a tool that has changed the way my students interact with and learn from each other. The integration of wikis into my curriculum has revolutionized the collaborative learning process in my classes. Students are now readily available to work together as they strive to understand major themes and issues from medieval world history. The collaborative nature of wikis has enabled me to create a community of learners who rely on each other to make sense of the information that is presented before them. The Partnership for 21st Century Skills is an organization that promotes the idea of providing students with the skills necessary to become productive citizens in this global society. Some specific skills to focus upon are collaboration and communication. Because wikis are a collaborative learning tool, this platform gives students the practice that they need to become active participants in the learning process while giving them the skills to become digitally proficient in this digital world. To begin, a wiki is a web-based tool. There is no software to download. Ward Cunningham created the first wiki software in 1994. The intent of wikis is to promote meaningful discussions. It allows for authors to create pages that are interlinked within a website. Members can add, change, or delete posts. The term wiki comes from the Hawaiian phrase for quick, the meaning being that users can quickly add to and edit a wiki page with relative ease. A wiki is an asynchronous communication tool in which authors are able to add to the wiki, but it is not necessarily in real time like text messaging or instant messaging. However, changes that are made to the wiki appear as soon as a page is refreshed in the web browser. The benefits of using a wiki with students is the fact that since they can add and edit information, it gives them the power to regulate their own learning experiences. Wiki pages, as well as the discussion tabs, support online collaboration, which means that learning can continue well outside of the tra traditional school day. Research has shown that wikis can increase student motivation, engagement, and achievement. It's no secret that the simple use of technology in the classroom is highly engaging and motivating for these digital natives. But what is probably more surprising is the notion that the use of wikis has a positive effect on student achievement. Though the studies have not positively linked the use of wikis to standardized test scores, there are a few that demonstrate that the use of wikis have a positive effect on long-term retention of knowledge. Having used wikis with my students for the past year, I can attest to the fact that the integration of wikis into my curriculum has increased student motivation and engagement. My new crop of students are exploring the various aspects of adding and editing text via the sandbox or practice pages that I created for them. It is important with any kind of technology integration that you give students a chance to simply play. Because student posts are immediately visible on the web, I have found that my students will edit their posts several times to make sure that they have it just right. And because they know that others will be reading their posts, I believe it makes them more self-conscious on what and how they write. And those of you who have experience with middle school students, you know that they have no problem calling teachers or even each other out on things that need to be clarified. Therefore, the idea of editing one's post comes in handy for this type of audience. Wikis also support the acquisition and practice of higher order thinking skills. By collaborating on essential questions or controversial topics, Students are practicing the skills of inquiry, cause and effect, and change over time. As they post their thoughts, opinions, and responses to their peers, students are engaging in the skills of analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. To what degree do my students engage in these higher order thinking skills 
depends in large part on the motivation to, to participate in these collaborative online discussions. There will always be students who will not take this experience as far as I would like, but that is the case with anything that I do in my class. For my classes, I have chosen to use Wikispaces because it is easy to set up and educators get a free premium account which is free of adver advertisement. But there are other Wiki platforms out there. PB Wikis or PB Works is another option. To add rigor to the various Wiki assignments, I integrate several different elements. Thinking tools, think like a disciplinarian, higher order thinking skills, as well as historical analysis skills. On the wiki, students have the option to use Sandra Kaplan's thinking tools to demonstrate their understanding of the material. Usually, I give my students a choice of which thinking tool to use unless there is a particular skill that they need to demonstrate or practice. Last year, for Think Like a Disciplinarian, I created a two-week assignment in which students chose a disciplinarian posed a question to research, and then conducted research in order to answer their question. They worked with students who chose the same disciplinarian and helped each other to answer the various questions posed on that disciplinarian's page. Through collaboration on various topics within the wiki, my students practiced higher order thinking skills as well as historical analysis skills. Being that I teach medieval world history, I try to give my students every opportunity to engage with the material as a mini historian. Students practice the art of inquiry as they learn how to frame questions for research. They examine cause and effect to understand how things change over time. They learn how to make connections across a time-space continuum, as well as find similar patterns across various civilizations and societies. Historical analysis skills are higher order thinking skills. It requires students to think like a historian as they read, examine, and analyze primary and secondary sources. And I'm able to do all of this with the wiki. In all that I do, I make sure that I differentiate not only for the various learning styles, but also academic levels of my students. I have studied Sandra Kaplan's theories, as well as read several of Carol Ann Tomlinson's works and they have had a profound influence on my approach to teaching to the various needs of my students. However, two resources from Judith Dodge have had the largest impact on my curriculum in the last three years. Her books, Differentiation in Action and 25 Quick Formative Assessments, have provided practical ways to integrate differentiation into my curriculum. One of the resources provided to you prior to this webinar are the response to text options which was created by Judith Dodge. I use the response to text options as a daily homework assignment for my students. I also give my students challenge assignments for those who want to push themselves to get the O or outstanding for work habits. As well, by offering leveled questions and activities, I am further able to meet the needs of my gate EL and RSP students. All of this can be done via pencil and paper, but I also offer this assignment that can be done on the wiki. Students use this platform to display their knowledge, creativity, and even sense of humor. Students already are using the computer, cell phone, and other digital tools at home for recreation. Why not give them a reason to use it for educational purposes? Because I offer the option of completing homework on the wiki, I am hooking those students who love technology but who may not choose to complete homework if it requires them to write it down on a piece of paper. I had several students last semester who chose to complete almost every single one of their homework assignments on the wiki. Now to keep them accountable, I always had an extra laptop on hand for them to use as we reviewed the homework assignments in class. Like all students, they were encouraged to correct their homework if necessary. Likewise, they were expected to participate in in-class discussions. This is the current wiki that I'm using with my students. Having just started a new semester with a whole new set of students, this wiki now has almost 400 members. As you can see, the home page contains a brief introduction, Think Like a Historian, which I wrote in order to build a schema for my students. 
It is important to set the ground rules for using a wiki. I also put together some helpful hints under the Getting Started section. For both my class website and wiki, I instruct my students to always start on the home page for the most important and up-to-date information. If you look at the navigation bar to the left, you can see the various pages that I used with my students. The most current pages are at the top for easy access. The top navigation bar on the page contains tabs that will come in very handy when using with students, Discussion, History, and Notify Me. I will address the Discussion and History tabs later in the presentation. The Notify Me tab is for teachers who want to monitor the various changes to the wiki. Wikispaces will generate emails notifying the teacher of any changes to the wiki. Teachers can receive email notifications for page edits, discussions, and file changes. It is important to note that any and all changes are recorded within the wiki. The History tab keeps track of all changes to a specific wiki page. But the Recent Changes page, located in the navigation bar on the left, keeps track of all changes on the wiki. Teachers are able to lock pages so that students cannot change or alter due dates. I lock pages after the assignment is completed. For daily homework, I usually assign a section of reading and tell the students to choose one or two response to text options. Prior to assigning the homework, I create a wiki page specifically for that assignment. I write an introduction to build a schema for my students. I like to include thought-provoking provoking tidbits to get them hooked. I then write the task including the due date right down to the due time. I usually put the due time to be five minutes before the start of the school day to give students who don't have internet access at home the opportunity to do their homework on the wiki once they get on campus. I like to include a picture on each page for my visual learners. I'm now going to show you several different wiki assignments that my students completed over the course of last semester. All tasks that I ask my students to complete are standards-based. On the page before you, you are looking at a typical task page on the wiki. I'll give you a moment to read the introduction and task to yourself. Since the wiki is open to all six periods of world history, there is the potential for all 200 students to post their response on the wiki. Some students work on the wiki in class, time permitting, whereas others complete the wiki assignment at home. Some students will naturally build upon or respond to their peers' posts, but most will simply post their response and leave it at that. Now let's take a look at a few student responses to this task page. As we go through the various student posts, look for examples of their voice. It's amazing what can be conveyed through simple text. James is not a Gates student, but he is one of my high achievers. James is a very inquisitive student who asks tons of questions in class and via email. He has no problem participating in in-class discussions, and the wiki was just another platform for him to air his thoughts and opinions. I'll give you a moment to read his response. As you can see, James chose to use Paradox, a thinking tool, to respond to the reading about Buddhism. The letters and caps are from James. Obviously, he wanted to emphasize certain words. Some people think that by using online communication tools, that we will miss visual and contextual clues. But there are ways to convey emphasis on particular words and phrases as evidenced by James's response. For this example, you're only looking at an excerpt and not the full response as posted by the student. From Kevin and Nan's response, you can see a playful relationship as Nan discovered that she and Kevin were concurrently editing the same wiki page. This resulted in Kevin overriding Nan's work, apparently several times. This poses a problem for teachers and students. 
I tell my students early on that in order to prevent losing work, that they need to type their response into a Word document, save it, and then cut and paste it to the wiki. That way, if another student is editing the page at the same time, it will be easy to simply copy and paste the response again. When more than one student is editing the page at the same time, a window will pop up on the toolbar to let students know. By the way, all student responses in this presentation are as is. I did not correct them for grammar or punctuation. Note the emoticon that Nan uses at the end of her response. Even though this is being done online, you can see that students are able to communicate feelings and emotions. This is another example of a daily homework assignment. I'll give you a moment to read the introduction and task. Students had two different tasks to complete for this assignment. The first is geared to differentiate from my students as they can choose from any one of the response to text options. The second task is for students to demonstrate understanding of the role that geography played in feudal society. Students have to find one example of how humans either helped or hurt the environment, or how the environment either helped or hurt humans. Once again, note that for both tasks, I'm giving my students options to demonstrate their learning. They get to choose what to use. This is one reason why I have such a high homework completion rate across my classes. On average, I have about 90% of my students turning in homework on a daily basis. And I think I hook some of my reluctant learners into completing homework simply because, number one, I give them choices, and number two, I allow it to be done online. For the first task, Denise chose to write two questions that she would like answered. This option is similar to the thinking tool, Unanswered Questions. Sometimes I choose to respond directly to students on the wiki, but usually I address questions like these the next day in class when I go over the homework. For the second task, Denise pulled from the reading an example of how the environment helped the peasants. This type of thinking is not low level. Students have to understand the concept of human-environment interaction before they can identify an example from the reading. Brian is one of my high achievers. He tends to analyze and synthesize the information on his own accord. He's definitely a thinker. Brian chose the response to text option, give an opinion of what you have read. Believe it or not, giving one's opinion is very hard for middle schoolers simply because they cannot fully explain why they believe what they do. But Brian did a good job explaining why he thought life for serfs was very unfair. These examples that I just showed you were for individual homework assignments. Students can choose to respond on the wiki or write their response on a piece of paper. Now I'm going to show you a couple of assignments on the wiki which required students to interact with each other. This is where you will see the power of collaborative learning. The ethical issues assignment was the first major wiki assignment that involved all 200 of my students. I created five different ethical issues task pages, dress code, food, punishment, death, and women's rights. These issues were all aligned with our study of the Islamic culture. I like to use ethical issues when studying the various civilizations of the Middle Ages because it gives students the opportunity to discuss issues from the past and make connections to society today. Before you is the task page for punishment. I'll give you a moment to read the introduction and task. For this assignment, students were required to post their initial response to any one of the questions that I posted. They had one week to post their response. The second task was, was to respond to one other person who posted on the same page. 
students could ask for clarification, offer support, or simply agree or disagree with their peer. Once again, students had one week to post their second response. The last required post for this assignment was the student's final response to the ethical issue. The thought being that since they could see the opinions and thoughts of their peers, and since at least one person responded to, to their initial post, that they can now synthesize their thoughts into one final response on the ethical issue. Some students responded many times, others chose just to respond once. A few students even chose to respond to a different ethical issue altogether. I didn't mind that because it was a perfect example of the high level of student motivation and engagement that was generated by this topic. The excerpts that are on the screen before you are examples of collaborative learning across classes. I'll give you, give you a moment to read the responses. In the first example, you can see that two students responded to Matthew's initial post. Ashley's response begins with, although an eye for an eye, which shows you that she doesn't necessarily agree with Matthew, but she goes on to explain why. In the second response, I did not include Julie's post, but you can see that Kimberly is responding to what Julie posted on the wiki. And because I like to engage in discussions with my students, I like to post questions to push them to think deeper. I didn't necessarily expect them to address my question, but it is a springboard for further discussion. If you take a look at Antu's response, she begins with a question. This is exactly how a historian would approach a topic, and here she is thinking like a historian. When students post on the wiki, they are instructed to change the color of their font when responding to a peer. It makes it easier for all of us to see who wrote what. The example that we just looked at was completed just one month into the school year. This next example was done during the last month of the semester. We were studying the Crusades, so I thought it would be a good idea to discuss the ethical issues of war. I'll give you a moment to read the introduction and task. Note that I gave the students a bare minimum to post. They had to write at least two sentences for their response. For the task, notice that I didn't ask if war was justified. I asked them, when is war justified? The fact of the matter is that war happens, and I wanted my students to think about the issues surrounding the idea of when is it okay to go to war. My students have relatives who are fighting in Iraq and in Afghanistan, so it's likely that they will have a particular perspective of war. I also have students whose grandparents and parents came from Vietnam, so war is something that is equally relevant to them personally. This kind of assignment is a way to connect with what we're learning about in medieval world history to current events. I approached this assignment differently than the last in that instead of allowing students to choose the ethical issue, all students were looking at the same ethical issue of war. But I created a wiki page for each of the nine tables in my classes. So students were collaborating with peers who sat at the same table throughout the day. This is another way to extend dialogue outside of the traditional class period. For this assignment, students were required to post an initial response as well as respond to a peer. Due to time constraints at the end of the semester, I did not have time for them to post their final response to the ethical issue, but that would have been an ideal way to synthesize their thoughts on the matter. This is an example of what was written on the whiteboard for the students to do for this assignment. Because the wiki can be done outside of the school day, I did not require students to work on the wiki during class. 
Of course, students who did not have internet access at home were encouraged to work on the wiki during class. But normal instruction was going on concurrently, so students had other assignments that they were required to complete during this time period. This is yet another example of the flexibility and choice given to my students. They could pick and choose what to do during class time. This is the to-do list that was posted on the board for days three and four for this assignment. If you look at task number one, you can see that I am encouraging my students to read all of the posts on their tables page before choosing someone to respond to. My thought behind that was to push my students to synthesize the information before responding to their peers. By reading all the posts, my students got the general idea of what their peers thought in regards to the ethical issues of war. Now let's take a look at the collaborative learning process for this assignment. Take a look at the first response. Norma believes that war is justified if you're trying to get the same rights as everyone else. But notice that Isaac's response makes a good point. He's pointing out to her that since everyone is treated differently, are we then going to fight the entire world? I'll pause to let you read the second response. If you look at some of the key phrases, you can tell that the students are not only supporting their opinion, but acknowledging what their peers wrote as well. Some key phrases, quote, I think that war is only justified when, end quote, or, quote, I disagree because there are other ways, end quote, or, in my opinion, in the second box. The first couple of posts are pretty simple, but the last post in the box is more in-depth. Fu Lan is one of my really quiet students in class. But from her post, I can tell that she definitely has an opinion about when war is justified. I chose to highlight these posts because each student is clearly building upon what Antu initially posted. I'll pause to let you read what my students wrote. Though so all of the students agree with Antu's initial post, they each use different arguments to support their opinion. Julie made a personal connection, whereas Lena took a more big picture approach by using the term you in her response. But what I really like is that Emily ends her response with the words, of course, as if it's a no-brainer to follow her logic. All four of these girls are very quiet in class. And if I didn't use the wiki to explore the ethical issues of war, I would never have discovered what these girls really thought, especially Antu and Emily, who wrote more than the minimum two sentences. There are numerous examples of shy, quiet students who would normally never raise their hand in class to give an opinion. But when given the opportunity to think before they textually speak, they have no problem sharing their thoughts and opinions. The wiki is giving these students a voice that their peers and I would normally have never heard. I learned a lot about my students via their posts and responses. It's another way for me to make a personal connection to individual students. It's something that I would find difficult to do with 36 students within a 47 minute class period, but this is possible with the wiki done outside of the school day. Another benefit of wikis is the ability to support self-regulated learning. Because the wiki is public and can be seen by all members, students feel a certain responsibility to edit their posts. In this example, my student, B. Gonzalez, edited his post four times within a 20-minute period. In fact, if you look at the time, there was a 16-minute delay 
before B. Gonzalez edited his post for the third time. Now, he could have been doing several things, texting, eating, etc., but he was likely double-checking his work because he makes a third edit at 5.32 and a fourth edit at 5.34. If you look at the example at the top, this is one of B. Gonzalez's edits. Everything in green is what was added, and the red is what was deleted. Now, I didn't require the students to check their grammar, but I did casually inform them that all 200 students could see what is posted on the wiki. What I found to be most interesting is that there were some students who would normally not correct the grammar on their homework when done on paper. But when put on a public venue like a wiki, they will take the time to fix their errors. Their edits were done without any specific prompting from me. It goes to show you that students do care about their work when done for an audience. Another aspect of the wiki which supports self-regulatory learning can be found through the use of the discussion tab. On the home page, I set up the option for students to leave messages for each other within the discussion tab section. What you are looking at is the log for the various discussion threads that my students started. The next slide is an example of one particular discussion thread. This discussion thread revolved around the issue of work being deleted. Remember, students cannot edit the same page at the same time, and though I had already explained this to my students, obviously there were still some students who were struggling with this issue. I'll give you a moment to read the thread. The benefit of using the discussion tab came as an unexpected surprise. I was going out of town for the long weekend, and I told my students that I would not be accessible via email as usual. I told them that they would need to rely on each other for help. So unbeknownst to me, several of my students used the discussion tab section to post help messages and offer suggestions to their peers who were panicking. The use of the discussion thread came as a direct result of the learning community that I established with my students via the wiki. They have no problem asking for as well as offering help. This is problem solving at its best. Some of you may be wondering, how do I keep students accountable? Wikispaces keeps a record of any and all additions, revisions, and deletions. To see the revisions on a particular page, I use a history tab. From that tab, I can see who edited and at what time. This comes in handy when there is a due time for a particular assignment. But this section is really handy when it comes to grading the wiki. Because students continue to edit when someone else is editing, their work oftentimes is deleted. However, by using the history section, I can click on each student and see what was added and deleted simply by looking at the color. Green is added, red is deleted. So if a student posted a response, but it's no longer visible on the wiki, I can check the history section, look for the student's name, and then when I click on the date and time, it pulls up what the student did on the wiki page. I make sure to let students know from day one that everything that they do is recorded on the wiki. It helps to keep them accountable when they can see what I see in the History tab section. Hopefully you now see the various benefits of using a wiki with students. For me, the biggest benefit is that wikis allow me to extend learning beyond the traditional school day. Discussions that normally would end once the bell rings can continue for days or weeks depending on the assignment. But the fact that students are motivated and engaged when given the opportunity to work with technology should not come as a surprise. Kids these days are surrounded by technology and media, but oftentimes there is a disconnect with the school. 
Introducing something as simple as a wiki might just be the hook that teachers need to get students interested. The fact that there is research to support the notion that wikis helps to increase student achievement and learning is another reason for teachers to explore the use of wikis. Further benefits addressed by the various examples I showed you include the fact that wikis support self-regulatory behavior. Students are held accountable not only to themselves, but to each other. Collaborative learning via the wiki supports constructivist learning principles. Students are actively engaged in the learning process as they respond to their peers. This type of learning is authentic and meaningful. As well, wikis support the multiple learning styles of students. Students who tend to be very shy in class often are the ones who blossom on the wiki. The fact that wikis allow for students to gather their thoughts together prior to posting supports the EL learner who may need the extra time to formulate a response. In fact, the California History Social Science Project did a study at a high school in Long Beach Unified and found that EL learners participated more when given the opportunity to respond online as opposed to face-to-face -face discussion. Students who are intrapersonal can work alone at home, whereas students who are the interpersonal learners are the ones who will likely respond to many of their peers as well as set up their own discussion threads. Wikis support the visual and auditory learners as well. Students can upload videos, podcasts, as well as hyperlinks to outside sources on the web. Students can add widgets and pictures they can also upload PDF and Word documents. The wiki can be as interactive as the students are creative. However, with the benefits come its own set of challenges. There is a learning curve when it comes to using the wiki. Your familiarity with technology may or may not keep you from exploring the benefits of the wiki but trust me, the benefits outweigh the challenges. Some other challenges to integrating any kind of technology falls along school infrastructure, availability of resources, and administrative support. Depending on the district, the school infrastructure may or may not be able to support 36 students using the wireless network. At my school, we have three mobile laptop carts with 20 computers apiece. When all three cards are in use, it comes close to overloading our wireless network. The availability of resources is another barrier. I consider my school to be lucky to have three mobile laptop carts, but I would much rather have a one-to-one -one laptop program in which each student has his or her own laptop. Administrative support is key because technology integration and use is hard enough without having an administration who doesn't believe in the educational value of technology. To get administrators on board, it's best to approach them with the research to demonstrate the positive effects and benefits of technology integration. The International Society for Technology and Education is a great professional organization of educators worldwide who are actively involved in promoting the use of technology in K-12 education. Luckily for me, I have an administration who is supportive of technology. We may not have the money to purchase everything on my wish list, that's what grants are for, but at least I know that they see the educational value of technology integration. District policies may prevent you from accessing the wiki from a school computer. But if Wikispaces is blocked at your school, I suggest you contact your IT department. They may be able to allow you to circumvent your district's firewall to have access to the wiki from a school computer. The bottom line is, with any kind of technology integration, there are going to be challenges. The question is, how far are you willing to go to get your students excited about learning? For those of you who are interested in setting up a wiki, Lisa emailed you a wiki basics. 
I put together a step-by-step -step process to hopefully make it easy for you to set up your own wiki. If you have any problems or questions, please feel free to email me. I'm giving you a tech website that I'm currently working on, which will house the various kinds of technology that I'm using with my students. It's still a work in progress, but over time, my goal is, is to provide teachers with a resource that contains practical ways to integrate technology into the curriculum. Most of my training in the use of technology came from the master's program at California State University Fullerton. Their MS program is completely online. It worked really well for my busy schedule as I was able to work when it was convenient for me. The biggest benefit to Fullerton's program is that it gave me the confidence to try many of the new technology tools that are out there. It is because of that program that I was introduced to wikis and it has completely revolutionized student learning and interaction in my classroom. Thank you for attending. Great, thank you so much, Catherine. We're gonna go ahead and spend the remaining time taking some questions from attendees. So if you think of a question, please submit it in the Q&A box. Um, the Q&A box, you can access that. If you look at the top of the participant list on the right-hand side of the screen, you should see a row of icons. Go ahead and press on the question mark icon and the Q&A panel will show up. And if we aren't get able to get to your question tonight, please feel free to send me an email. My email address is listed on this slide in front of you and I can forward it on to Catherine or use other resources we have here at UC Irvine Extension to try and get you an answer. So Catherine, I see in the Q&A panel some people had already been submitting questions while you were presenting, so I'll go ahead and um, kind of help you go through them and we'll verbally state the question first and then if you can provide an answer and if not um, we can always have the attendees email me the question and then we can answer it after the webinar. So I see a question here, um, a couple questions regarding grade levels and wikis. So do you recommend using wikis for certain grade levels or do you think it, it can be applied at any grade level? Um, it's amazing what um, what technology can be done at, at the different grade levels. I'm, I actually know that there are some first grade classes that are using blogs and since students are able to respond on blogs, I think that wikis can be used in the elementary levels. Perfect. Okay, and then how have your students responded to the use of a wiki? Do they prefer it over other methods of homework or assignments? Um, yeah, they absolutely love the wiki. In fact, I have students from last year that are current 8th graders who are kind of bummed because the 8th grade teachers aren't using the wiki to foster, you know, collaboration outside the school day or to do their homework. So I know that there's still an interest in it, and it's kind of exciting to see that they still remember it. Okay. But yeah, my students absolutely love it. Now, what kind of, other than the the master program that you went through, did you kind of teach yourself on how to use the basics of wikis and, and how did you train your students on how to use the different tools? Did you take um, time out of the class to kind of open up one and, and show it on the projector and kind of go through all the different steps and tools available to them? Well, I actually used, I learned how to use a wiki through my master's program. It was one of the things that uh, we had to learn how to use. So that was kind of the practical part of the program. Um, and using it with my students, I'm the type of teacher where I just jump in with both feet and just kind of see how it goes. And um, I just opened it up one day with the students um, on their laptops. And I was teaching many lessons over a week period. I would teach them how to add text. I would teach them how to add pictures. But those many lessons lasted maybe five, ten minutes at the most, and then I would let the students play. And then they would inevitably figure it out on their own and be able to teach others. Okay. And then you can also see the questions, correct? It's in the it's in the Q and A panel. If you see any, um, feel free to just interrupt me if you if you see a question that you want to address right away. Okay. Um there is one about fairness and equality, and I, I do believe that you addressed it well in your presentation um, at the very end. It is one of the challenges of using technology in the classroom. 
because not all school districts are lucky enough to have um, laptop carts um, like, like your school district has available to students. Um, and also, I believe that you mentioned in your presentation that you make the due date for some of your assignments right before the start of the class so that if students don't have internet at home, they can also come to campus and, you know, before school starts, go to the library, get on the computers there and complete any assignments. Is that correct? That is true. Now, um, if I am requiring a response on the wiki and if I don't have the, the laptop cards already reserved, I give them a full week to find computer access somewhere, and that full week also includes a weekend. Okay. So the students okay. have an opportunity to do that. But I also tell the students that, and I forgot to mention it during the presentation, um, if they have a data plan with their, with their cell phone, which a lot of students have now, that they can just access the wiki through their phone, which they okay. find crazy. Okay. Fabulous. Okay, good. So you do adjust deadlines, let's say if the laptops aren't available or if the computer lab for some reason isn't open, you will adjust the deadline so that to give them enough time to finish the assignment. Oh yeah, it's never punitive. If it's, if it's due the next day, it means that I have a laptop cart already reserved and they have full class time to work on it. Okay. And then another good question, um, can you ban students from posting inappropriate things on a wiki or how do you kind of... I guess, monitor all the postings from yeah, students. That's so funny. I actually had a student who um, was posting things on the wiki, and he was doing it on the practice page, so it wasn't he wasn't hurting anyone's homework assignments or their actual assignments, but he was just posting things that were inappropriate. So I addressed it with him twice. And in my school, we have a policy where if they don't follow the rules for Internet use, that they are banned from it. And so I just fell back on the school policy. He was banned from the wiki. I kicked him out. He wasn't a member. Um, whenever the students were working on a wiki assignment, he had a separate assignment to do. And he was so bummed because he loved technology. Mm -hmm. So he learned the hard way. Okay. And then I did see someone else's question. Um, do you have, do parents need to sign off on their kids using wikis in the classroom? Are there any guidelines as far as that? Well, on my class website, I have a parent page, so I explain what the wiki is, and I leave, um, I leave them a link so that they want to become a member. I've had no parents take me up on it. <laughs> um, so on my school website, I am very open with the parents. For back-to-school night and open house, I also mention it. I am sure that their students also mention it. I don't know if all of them do, but... Um, they don't sign a specific thing for the wiki, but it's a private one, and it's just me and my students, and I am I fiercely monitor everything. Okay. And about how long do you, or how often do you review student responses and postings, or daily. comment on them daily? Oh, I I don't comment I don't comment on every single student daily, but I am on the wiki several times a day checking the history section and the recent changes just to keep them accountable, especially in the beginning. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Someone asked, did it cost, does it cost money to have a Wikispaces site? Um, it's actually free for educators to get the premium site with no, with no advertisement through Wikispaces. Oh, good. So that's a really good resource. Oh, yeah. But I noticed that I've heard through my, um, my uh, learning network that there are some school districts that are blocking Wikispaces. Mm. So that's important to check because I, I thought it was open. Okay. So I don't know what's going on with that. So you would recommend that they check with their administration and hopefully their IT department can um, allow that so that the firewall doesn't doesn't block wiki spaces. Yeah, because if they just stay within their own site and they don't go to any outside websites from the wiki space, I don't see how it would be a problem. Okay. So. And did you personally run into any barriers? when you were trying to introduce wikis to your classroom as far as um, getting approval from your school administration? Actually, my administrators um, have been totally supportive of what I've done. I'm very open with them. I tell them I'm going to try this with the kids. They like to come in and see what I'm doing. So I haven't had any problems that way. But technology has been a nightmare this past week with trying to get on the wireless. Mm. So it's, it's been horrible. OK. It's 9 o'clock on my clock, but do you see any other questions real quick, Catherine, that you want to address? Again, if we don't get to your question tonight, feel free to email it to me. Again, my contact information is on this slide, and I can forward it on to Catherine for her to address. 
Well, actually, I, I would like, like you would like to respect their time. So um, if you could just forward the questions to me, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Perfect. All right. So I'd like to thank Catherine. Thank you so much for presenting on such a hot topic tonight. And I'd also like to thank all of you for logging in, and I hope you enjoyed the entire webinar series. If you missed any of the webinars earlier this month or would like to rewatch the series at any time, the recordings will be uploaded to our online GATE community. And I will be sending out an email tomorrow with a link to the recording of this webinar tonight, as well as a PDF copy of the PowerPoint presentation. And then Catherine also mentioned a couple times um, the Wiki Basics PDF that she put together, which kind of goes through step by step on how to set up a wiki, and then um, another PDF called Response to Text Options. So I will be forwarding those documents and the recording to you tomorrow. So check your email and look for those. Also, please visit UCI Extension's gate page to learn about our program and offerings. Thank you again for your participation, and have a great night, everybody. Thanks, Lisa. Bye. Thank you.